Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. This week we go through what it takes to fit a Mercedes grill on a Freightliner Sprinter, removing the spare battery under the passenger side seat, doing some more bodywork, and finally test fitting our windows. So we decided to go with a Mercedes grill because the Freightliner grill that came on the van was very old and it was missing the Freightliner logo and when we took it off we realized it was actually glued to the hood. So in order to do this, we had to modify the brackets, or actually the body panels, that go underneath the lights. Because our headlights were designed for the Freightliner, where the Mercedes badging on the grill actually fits the Dodge vans. So we made some modifications there, changed that over, and got it ready for the Mercedes grill. Then we removed the battery under the passenger seat. The reason that we did this is because our S-Bar diesel heater is going to go in that location so we needed to make some room and figure out if we needed to make any modifications in order to make it fit. Because the other thing that runs through the seat there are the power cables that charge that extra battery and the cable that goes to the rear of the van which we wired up where it will actually charge our house batteries that will be located in the back of the van. So then began the long task that included a lot of sanding. So we had put a full coat of primer on the van and pretty much everywhere had to be touched because the paint coat that we put on had a good bit of orange peel to it. So basically what this is is when you spray paint it has the opportunity to have a textured look to it. And this could happen for a couple different reasons. Uh, one, you can be light on the catalyst that you mix in. So the ratio of the paint to catalyst could be slightly off. Another is if you don't use quite enough air pressure that can cause the paint to not atomize completely before it hits the van and that will also cause the, the orange peel texture on the van. So because we had this issue we had to sand the entire van down and remove the orange peel. Now we would have had to sand anyways but this led to a little bit more sanding than we would have liked. Basically every panel on the van had to be sanded. We ended up taking the hood off and sanding it down flat. And there was a couple spots where we needed a little bit more body work. And when we sanded the primer, those spots became apparent because the high spots cut down to bare metal and the low spots you could tell weren't even touched by the sander at all. So we did some body work, patched those places up, sanded them down again, and on the next round of paint, we decided to only paint the places that needed bodywork. So instead of going over the entire van with another coat of primer, we decided to just paint the places where the Bondo showed through. And the reason we wanted to do this is because we wanted to avoid sanding the entire van once again if we didn't really need to. Now later on, we are going to go back with a, another full coat of primer before the top coat so we can have a nice, good, a nice smooth base for the entire top coat to go down on and you won't see any of the blend areas or anything of that nature. But for now we just wanted to assess the areas that needed more primer due to the bodywork and go ahead and get those ready for paint. Another thing we learned is that we left all the window coverings on after we primed and didn't take them off soon enough. So all the tape, even though it was masking tape, stuck to the rubber of the window frames and even on the inside of the van the masking tape didn't pull off in there either it stuck to the metal really bad and another place where it was really bad was the track that the door was on we're gonna have to come back with a scotch bright pad and clean that up to get all the the tape residue off of there because it just you could not get it off in one strip the masking tape ripped and left behind residue and was pretty much a, a nightmare. Another thing to note on this layer of sanding we've moved up to the next level of sandpaper. The first layer we we're using 80 and 120 grit sandpaper which is a more coarse paper that removes more paint quicker. But what that does is it leaves streaks in the paint so everywhere that the sander oscillates or your hand moves with the sandpaper under it you can see the streaks as you move. On this round we went with either 180 or 220 grit sandpaper which you can still see a little bit of the pattern as you sand but it's one step closer to preparing for the top coat. 
and it leaves less streaks and usually the primer on the next round will actually fill in those streaks and will level out on top and you won't be able to see the streaks once you spray the primer. And for the next coat after that, we'll move up to a, a 320 to 400 grit sandpaper and that'll be the final round before the top coat. So as you can see, the passenger side of the van took a lot more bodywork and a lot more bondo than the driver side. And that's due to the fact that the driver side panel from the middle of the van all the way to the rear of the van had been replaced at some point. And it was kind of a pain because the rain gutter was messed up and the van was leaking, but now that it's fixed, it's actually been kind of nice to not have to do excessive amounts of bodywork on the driver's side of the van. So another thing that we did to get ready for paint is tape up the areas where there would be windows and there's like a channel that runs around the window and we didn't want to have to sand that again. So we taped around it and tried to prepare for paint that way. So we primed the areas that needed more primer and you can see the overspray kind of gets on the, the lens cover of the GoPro there so the video is not all that great. but. We uh, got another coat of primer on the areas that needed it and it looks like my spraying technique is getting slightly better thanks to all the help that my dad's given me on teaching me how to actually use the, the spray gun and get the paint to flow evenly and all the advice along the way. It's definitely a kind of an art form and it's something that I'm trying to get better on but it's uh, hopefully by the, end, by the time we get to the top coat I'll be good enough at it to where you'll think it's painted at a professional garage. But I guess we'll see. So this time, after we got done painting, we removed all the paint masking immediately so we wouldn't have it stuck to the rubber and the door track and all the other places that gave us trouble when we tried to remove it before. And luckily we got it all off without messing up the paint that we had sprayed. So the next step we did is we got our windows in got them out of the box and we got ready to test fit them. So we ordered some windows from Motion Windows and there's half sliders on the two rear doors and it's a T slider on the one behind the driver's side. But the one thing that we had to do first is clean all of the tape residue out of the window tracks from where we masked them off to not get paint in them. So looking back I don't know if it would have been easier to just sand the paint out because it was a real pain to get all of the masking tape residue out of those little tracks. So we test fitted the window and it turns out that the window actually it fits the opening perfectly except for the corner radiuses are slightly different than the stock window that was in it. So when you buy the windows they tell you that it'll fit in the stock windows I think on this particular van, one, there was some rust in the corners, which definitely didn't help. You can see here that you can actually see through the window gap into the van just because that radius is different. And the rust, like I said, definitely didn't help matters. But it was really out on all four corners. So fortunately, we were at a point where we could add some material in by welding and it wasn't going to set us back too far. Now if I had painted the top coat and then found this, I probably would have been a little upset, but luckily at this point in the build, we were at a place where we were able to kind of correct the issue and not be too far behind schedule or mess up any of the paint. So we looked at the back windows and these windows, as they said, we'd have to remove a little bit of material. And the reason being is because the original windows were urethaned in. So they had to have a section where the urethane actually stuck to them. The motion windows fit in with a compression style gasket that actually clamps onto the window. So we took the sawzall, opened up the window opening, and it turns out on the rear windows as well, the radius is not quite perfect either in the corners. So there was enough material there but the problem is, is it's not the same depth as the material on the four sides. So we ended up having to do some bodywork bondo filler on those corners to bring them up so that the windows would seal properly on all four corners. But it wasn't that hard to get the windows trimmed down. We got it really close with the sawzall 
and then came back with the side grinder and cleaned everything up. We test fitted the windows a couple times to make sure that they were still fitting perfectly. What we did is we allowed for about a quarter inch gap all the way around so that the window's technically floating in space once you clamp it in because we didn't want there to be any stress on the corners of the windows as you open the doors or the doors flexed or anything of that nature. So we went through a couple iterations of test fitting them and got those windows to fit perfectly in the back. So in order to add the material behind the driver's side window, we made a cardboard template and cut out some metal that matched the cardboard template. And then we then put the metal in the window and kind of held it up and we had to actually trim it down to make it fit perfectly. It really needed to be like a half moon shaped metal to fit in there and we ended up just making it as close as we could get it and then grinding it down. So we had to clean out that area because we had primed it already and we needed a clean area for the welder to be able to weld to. So we cleaned that off with the cut brush, got our pieces installed. So here's what we started with basically. The corner of the window, a little bit rusty and a little bit too small to meet that radius. And then we clamped in our piece of metal and welded it in solid. And I welded both sides solid just to prevent any water from coming in. That's one thing that we were kind of worried about. And eventually we'll, we come back with some Bondo and fill all the rust completely up after we brushed it all down the, to bare metal. So we go around, weld each one of the corners in so it will line up with the window. And it's actually a good bit of welding to get all four of them in. And the other thing is the body, especially where it was rusted, was super, super thin. And the plates that we were welding in probably were a little on the thick side. So it tended to want to burn through the van body really easily and create holes. So that's one thing, had to be real careful when we were welding to not just melt through the, the van there basically and make the problem worse than it already was. So I had to jump around a lot, keep the weld areas cool. And we ended up with four pieces, one in each corner, all welded solid, ready to come back for the grinder and make it where the window fits. So we got the window frame and laid it in there, realized that we had a, a good bit of grinding to do to make it fit right. So we got the grinder out with the flapper disc on it and took some material off. And we realized that it was gonna actually end up being a lot of material. So we got the sawzall and cut it down to be a, more of an arch instead of a flat uh, angle basically. And then decided to come back with the grinder and get it close. So it took a couple of test fits after we ground some of the material out and it ended up fitting pretty nicely once we got everything ground down the way it should be. And it turns out the windows too, they actually have a little bit of a bend to them to match the contour of the van, which seems a little bit excessive when you test fit it at first, but I'm sure once we put the window in and lock it down with all the hardware, that it will pull it down to meet flush with the window inside the gasket. So the finished work, we've got the four pieces ground down, and what happened was when we did all the welding, it actually bubbled the paint up in the corners. So we're gonna have to take all that paint off and get it ground down to bare steel for when we do, do the final round of primer. So as you can see, the window now fits nicely in the corners. There's no gap and there's a flat surface for the entire gasket to seal on. So cleaned up around the outside of the other windows and get, got those ready for primer. This wraps up episode 5 of the Van Build series. If you like what you saw, hit that thumbs up button. If you got a question or a comment, drop it below and we'll get back to you. And if you're ready for more, hit that subscribe button and we'll be back next week with a new video.